The lights are about to go out, and when they do, most people will be caught completely off guard. Imagine sitting at home, scrolling your phone, when suddenly everything goes dark. No fridge hum, no TV glow, just silence. At first you think it's a blown transformer. But what if it isn't? What if this blackout lasts not hours, but days, weeks, or even months? Here's the hard truth. Our electrical grid is hanging by a thread. It's old, overloaded, and more vulnerable than ever. While people argue about politics and scroll social feeds, the infrastructure that powers modern life is crumbling. And when it fails, the fallout will be catastrophic. This isn't a far-off doomsday fantasy. It's already happening. California's rolling blackouts, Texas's winter grid collapse, cyber attacks, aging equipment. The question isn't if, it's when. In this video, I'll expose the five critical vulnerabilities that prove the grid's collapse is inevitable. Let me start with something that should terrify every American. Our electrical grid wasn't built for the 21st century. Most of the infrastructure powering your home right now was installed in the 1960s and 70s. That's right. The same decade when people were still using rotary phones and black and white televisions. Imagine trying to run today's technology on a computer from 1970. That's essentially what we're doing with our power grid. The average age of power transformers in the United States is over 40 years old. These massive critical components that step down high voltage electricity to power your neighborhood weren't designed to last this long. They're operating well beyond their intended lifespan, held together by hope and duct tape. When one of these giants fails, it's not like swapping out a light bulb. These transformers weigh hundreds of thousands of pounds, cost millions of dollars, and take months or even years to replace. But here's where it gets really scary. We don't make these transformers in America anymore. Most of them are manufactured overseas, primarily in countries that aren't exactly our closest allies. So when a transformer fails during a major grid event, we're not just waiting for a repair truck to show up. We're waiting for international shipping, hoping that global supply chains remain intact, and praying that geopolitical tensions don't interfere with our ability to keep the lights on. The second vulnerability is something called the peak demand crisis. Every summer, when millions of air conditioners kick into high gear, our grid gets pushed to its absolute breaking point. The system that was designed for a simpler time is now expected to handle massive loads that increase every single year. Electric vehicles, cryptocurrency mining, data centers, and smart homes are all sucking power from a grid that's already maxed out. Utility companies have been playing a dangerous game of robbing Peter to pay Paul, shifting power around the grid like a shell game to avoid catastrophic failures. They've been getting lucky so far, but luck has a way of running out at the worst possible moment. When demand exceeds supply, something has to give. And when it does, it won't be a gentle brownout that dims your lights for a few minutes. It will be cascading failures that bring down entire regions. Think about what happened in Texas during the winter storm of 2021. The grid couldn't handle the demand, power plants started shutting down, and within hours, millions of people were plunged into darkness in freezing temperatures. People died. That wasn't a freak accident. It was a preview of what's coming on a much larger scale. The third critical vulnerability is our complete dependence on just-in-time logistics. Modern society operates on the assumption that everything will work perfectly all the time. Grocery stores don't keep months of food in storage because they expect deliveries every few days. Gas stations don't maintain massive fuel reserves because tanker trucks show up regularly to refill their tanks. Hospitals don't stockpile months of medical supplies because they rely on constant shipments. But what happens when the trucks can't refuel because gas pumps need electricity? What happens when traffic lights go dark and supply chains grind to a halt? What happens when communication systems fail and companies can't coordinate deliveries? The entire just-in-time system collapses like dominoes, and suddenly, store shelves go empty within days. Most people have no idea how fragile this system really is. They think that as long as they have money in their bank account, they can buy whatever they need. But money becomes worthless when there's nothing to buy. And without electricity, even electronic transactions become impossible. Cash might be king for a while, but eventually, even cash won't matter if there are no goods to purchase. The fourth vulnerability is something that keeps national security experts awake at night. Cyber attacks. Our power grid was never designed to be connected to the internet. But over the years, 
utilities have been adding digital controls and smart systems to improve efficiency. The problem is that every digital connection creates a potential entry point for hackers. Foreign adversaries have already demonstrated their ability to penetrate our grid systems. They've planted malware that could be activated at any time, turning our own infrastructure against us. Imagine the chaos if hostile nations could shut down power to major cities at will. It wouldn't require bombs or missiles, just a few keystrokes from halfway around the world. But it's not just foreign governments we need to worry about. Criminal organizations and terrorist groups are also developing sophisticated cyber capabilities. They've already proven they can shut down pipelines, disrupt hospitals, and cripple businesses with ransomware attacks. The power grid represents the ultimate target, a single point of failure that could bring an entire nation to its knees. The scariest part about cyber threats is that we might not even know we're under attack until it's too late. Modern cyber weapons can lurk in systems for months or years, gathering intelligence and waiting for the perfect moment to strike. By the time the lights go out, the damage could already be irreversible. The fifth and perhaps most terrifying vulnerability is the cascade effect. The power grid isn't just a bunch of isolated systems. It's an interconnected web where failures in one area can trigger failures throughout the entire network. When one power plant goes offline, other plants have to pick up the slack. If they can't handle the additional load, they shut down too. This creates a domino effect that can bring down the entire regional grid in a matter of minutes. We've seen this happen before on smaller scales, but a truly massive cascade failure would be unprecedented in modern history. The 2003 Northeast blackout gave us a taste of what's possible when a simple software bug triggered failures across multiple states and parts of Canada. 50 million people lost power, and it took days to fully restore service. That was just a preview. A worst-case cascade failure could leave hundreds of millions of people without power for weeks or months. The economic damage would be measured in trillions of dollars, but the human cost would be far worse. Modern cities simply cannot function without electricity. Water treatment plants would fail, hospitals would run out of backup power, and chaos would reign in the streets. But here's what really should keep you up at night. The human element. All of these technical vulnerabilities pale in comparison to the chaos that erupts when millions of unprepared people suddenly find themselves thrust into a world without power. Most Americans have never experienced a prolonged blackout. They have no idea what it's like when the veneer of civilization gets stripped away in a matter of hours. Picture your neighborhood right now. Think about your neighbors. How many of them have more than a few days' worth of food stored away? How many have alternative heating sources when the furnace stops working? How many have backup communication methods when cell towers go dark? The answer is almost none. When the lights go out and stay out, these unprepared masses become desperate very quickly. Desperation makes people do things they never thought they were capable of. The friendly neighbor who waves at you every morning might be the same person trying to break into your house when their children are crying from hunger. Store owners who've never touched a weapon in their lives will be forced to defend their businesses with whatever they can find. Police officers and first responders dealing with their own family emergencies won't be coming to help. I've studied every major disaster in recent history, and there's a consistent pattern. Social order begins to break down within 72 hours when basic services are interrupted. After a week without power, even the most civilized communities start to resemble something out of a post-apocalyptic movie. The thin blue line that separates order from chaos disappears when the people enforcing it are worried about their own survival. And here's the kicker. Government emergency response plans are based on short-term, localized disasters. FEMA has supplies and personnel positioned to handle hurricanes, earthquakes, or terrorist attacks that affect specific regions. But a nationwide grid failure? They're not equipped for that level of catastrophe. Their emergency supplies might last a few days in a small area, but they couldn't possibly support hundreds of millions of people for weeks or months. The uncomfortable reality is that you're on your own. Government agencies know this, which is why they quietly encourage people to have emergency supplies, but they can't say it out loud because it would cause panic. They're hoping that somehow, miraculously, the grid will hold together long enough for them to figure out a solution. But hope isn't a strategy, and wishful thinking won't keep the lights on. Let me paint you a picture of what the first week of a major grid failure would look like. 
Day one starts with confusion and inconvenience. People assume it's temporary, maybe even joke about having an excuse to leave work early. Gas stations that still have fuel sell out within hours as people try to top off their tanks. Grocery stores see a rush of customers buying up bottled water and non-perishable foods, but most people still think this will blow over soon. By day three, the mood starts to shift. Cell phone towers have exhausted their backup batteries, cutting off most communication. ATMs don't work, credit card machines are dead, and banks can't access their computer systems. Cash becomes the only way to buy anything, but stores are running low on inventory because delivery trucks can't get fuel. The lucky few with gas power generators are running them constantly, but fuel is becoming scarce. Day 5 brings the first real taste of desperation. Hospitals are struggling to keep life support systems running as their backup generators run out of fuel. Water treatment plants have shut down, leaving millions without clean drinking water. Sewage systems are backing up because pumping stations have no power. The stench in urban areas becomes overwhelming as garbage piles up and sanitation services collapse. By day seven, it's a completely different world. Store shelves are empty, not because there isn't food in the supply chain, but because the supply chain itself has collapsed. Truckers can't get fuel, distribution centers can't operate without power, and even if they could, electronic payment systems are down. Bartering becomes common as people trade whatever they have for necessities. The psychological impact is just as devastating as the physical challenges. Modern humans are completely dependent on technology for everything from entertainment to basic navigation. Without smartphones, computers, or television, people feel isolated and disconnected. The constant stream of information that we're all addicted to suddenly disappears, leaving an eerie silence that many find more disturbing than the lack of electricity itself. But the real nightmare scenario isn't just the immediate chaos, it's the long-term consequences that most people never consider. When the grid goes down for weeks or months, we're not just talking about inconvenience. We're talking about the complete breakdown of everything that makes modern civilization possible. Manufacturing stops, agriculture becomes primitive, and medical care reverts to what it was a century ago. Financial systems collapse when banks can't access their computer networks. The stock market vanishes overnight. Retirement accounts, savings, and investments exist only as electronic records that no one can access. Years of financial planning and wealth accumulation disappear in an instant. The economic reset that follows a major grid failure would make the Great Depression look like a minor recession. Supply chains that took decades to develop and optimize would be destroyed in a matter of weeks. Even after power is restored, it would take years to rebuild the complex networks that deliver food, medicine, and essential goods to every corner of the country. The just-in-time system that keeps store shelves stocked would need to be completely reconstructed from scratch. The ripple effects would extend far beyond what most people can imagine. Communication networks that took decades to build would need complete reconstruction. The internet infrastructure that connects our global economy would be fractured, potentially for years. International trade would revert to methods not used since the early 20th century, assuming other nations even want to do business with a country that can't keep its lights on. But here's what makes this scenario even more terrifying. The window for recovery gets smaller every day the grid stays down. In the first few weeks, skilled technicians and engineers are still available to work on repairs. They're motivated, organized, and focused on getting systems back online. But as the crisis drags on, these essential workers face the same survival pressures as everyone else. They'll eventually abandon their posts to take care of their own families. Nuclear power plants represent a special kind of nightmare in an extended blackout scenario. These facilities require constant power to maintain cooling systems, even when they're shut down. Most have backup generators with enough fuel for several days, maybe a week if they're lucky. But when that fuel runs out and no more is available, we're looking at potential meltdowns that would contaminate vast areas for generations. The very technology that was supposed to provide clean, reliable power could become our greatest threat. Military bases and government facilities have their own backup systems, but they're not designed for indefinite operation. The armed forces that maintain order during smaller disasters would face the same resource constraints as everyone else. Personnel would be torn between their duty and their family's needs command and control structures that rely on electronic communication 
would be severely compromised. Agricultural regions might fare better initially, but even farming has become dependent on modern technology. GPS-guided tractors, computerized irrigation systems, and electronic monitoring of livestock all require power. Farmers would need to revert to methods their great-grandparents used, but most of them have never learned those skills. Food production would plummet just when the population needs it most. Rural communities often assume they'd be safer during a grid collapse, but that's not necessarily true. While they might have more space and resources, they'd also become targets for desperate urban populations fleeing the cities. Small towns that have never needed security would suddenly find themselves overwhelmed by refugees with nothing to lose. The peaceful countryside could become a battleground between locals and newcomers, competing for limited resources. Emergency services would be overwhelmed and then collapse entirely. Fire departments couldn't respond to calls without communication systems and fuel for their trucks. Police forces would be stretched beyond their breaking point, trying to maintain order with limited resources and no backup. Ambulances would become useless without hospitals capable of treating patients. The safety net that modern society provides would vanish when people need it most. The timeline for recovery would be measured in years, not months. Even if the technical problems were solved quickly, rebuilding the economic and social structures would take a generation. People who lived through the crisis would be permanently changed, making decisions based on scarcity and survival rather than abundance and growth. The optimism and risk-taking that drive American entrepreneurship would be replaced by caution and hoarding. But perhaps most disturbing of all is how quickly the veneer of civilization would disappear. The moral and ethical standards that we consider fundamental to human nature are actually luxuries that depend on abundance and security. When survival becomes the primary concern, those standards get abandoned quickly. Good people do terrible things when they're watching their loved ones starve. The technical challenges of grid recovery are staggering, but the human challenges are what make this scenario truly apocalyptic. Rebuilding power plants and transmission lines is difficult but possible. Rebuilding trust, cooperation, and social cohesion after communities have turned on each other is far more complex. The America that emerges from a prolonged grid failure would be fundamentally different from the country that went into it. The domino effect would continue long after power is restored. Businesses that closed during the blackout might never reopen. Workers who left their jobs to focus on survival might not return. Supply chains that were broken would need complete reconstruction. The economic recovery would be slow and painful, assuming it happens at all. What makes this scenario so terrifying is not just its plausibility, but its inevitability. The grid will fail eventually. The only questions are when, how badly, and whether we'll be ready. Every day we delay preparing is another day closer to a catastrophe that will make every other disaster in American history look like a minor inconvenience. The warning signs are flashing red, but most people are too distracted to notice. So there you have it. Five vulnerabilities that make grid collapse not just possible, but inevitable. We're relying on aging infrastructure patched with quick fixes, peak demand that pushes the system past its limits, fragile supply chains that fail the moment fuel stops flowing, cyber threats that could cripple operations with a single strike, and cascade effects that turn small outages into nationwide blackouts. Add millions of unprepared people into that equation, and you've got a recipe for chaos. The truth is, this isn't a problem for someday. The cracks are already here and they're widening. While most people assume the lights will always turn on, the smart ones are quietly preparing before the switch flips for good. Because when the grid finally goes down, there won't be time to improvise. The time to prepare is right now, while the shelves are still stocked and the lights are still on.